Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sane, and today I'm going to do the second part of my maddening, early maddening guide. The three, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Last video I covered the Black Eagles. This video I'm going to be covering the Blue Lions, and then next is going to be Golden Deer, and then after that is going to be the Ashen Wolves. Again, this guide is really only for the early, early game of maddening, like the first five chapters or so. And this is a guide of what I recommend you should do to really get yourself past those first five chapters, which really don't allow a lot of experimentation going on. I think once you pass this thresh, pass that kind of certain point in the game, then the game really starts to open up for you. Your characters start to snowball more. You can definitely start experimenting more, uh, doing those classes that you want and all that stuff. This also does consider that you're playing maddening mode on just new game, no new game plus. This also takes into consideration DLC, although that doesn't really affect the classes too much. But yeah, this is this is based off a maddening mode, fresh file game, no new game plus. The this is this is my little first guide: how you should use your characters, how you should focus your characters, focus your students to get past those first five chapters, because it is a beast. It is a monster to get past. So first off, obviously Dimitri is he's one of the best lords. I mean, oh, they're all th they're all three so amazing, but they're, he's one of the best characters. He's he's such a crutch for early game. I could say for sure he's been a top three uh, teammate for me on my maddening playthrough, along with Byleth and I would say either Yuri or Felix. He's just he's so so good. He comes with Tempest Lance at base. I think you should definitely just focus his lance. I think you should focus his lance throughout the entire playthrough. Don't use anything else for him. Don't waste your time with swords. You could take him into Thief and Assassin at some point to boost his speed for the, for the, for the rest of the game. But early game, just focus his lances. Let him. He gets Tempest Lance at base, which is an amazing combat art. One of the best, especially early game. Possibly the best early game. He then very quickly gets Night Kneeler, which is very, very helpful against any Cavaliers and Paladins. For example, Lenato. Lord Lenato and the Mutiny of the Mist chapter, he is so helpful to have Night Kneeler in my playthrough specifically. He was able to do like 80% of Lenato's health with Night Kneeler and a Steel Lance and he just blew him up and he made Lenato honestly so easy to fight. He also is so good at killing the Death Knight with, with, with a Night Kneeler so you don't have to rely on someone like Lysithia. Night Kneeler is just really really helpful. He also gets Monster Monster Piercer at C+, for Lance, which can really help you against Sylvain's older brother when, he went, well, as soon as he turns into the, the beast. Um, he, Monster Piercer is really going to help you out there, do a lot of damage to that guy. He, I, you really just focus the Lances, get your Lance prowess up, give him better hit rates with that. Unfortunately, he has a, a boon in, or has a weakness in Axes, so it doesn't get Brigand, or it doesn't get to Brigand super easily. You can still do it. I, I've i still found success doing it. It's pretty easy to get him to Brigand anyways. Um, so you can get Deathblow. You can you can take him into Archer too early game. As for classes, class-wise he doesn't have the best selection early on. Um, Lord is fine for him. You can take him to Thief. Get a sword rank up, but just enough to get him to Thief for speed. Uh, but you definitely want to focus Lance for that early for the early game and for end game. Pretty much, you should definitely stay in a Lance class for him. I would say something like Paladin. You can do Paladin if you want Kanto, have eight movement, um, or just stay in Great Lord. Great Lord is an amazing class for him. He does excellent in that in both those classes. Definitely stick with his lances. To do is such a crutch early game. Because he can, he's the, one of the only characters who's able to take more than one hit, especially against double, enemies who double him. His staunch shield ability is really helpful for just getting, for luring in some enemies so they attack him and don't attack anybody else, and then you can just dogpile them. He doesn't deal a lot of damage, but I think if you focus his axe, you can really increase his damage output as much as possible. He gets smash at base, which is very, very effective. He does get Helm Splitter at C. Uh, which can help against any kind of armor knight, fortress knight, again, like Sylvain's older brother. Um, and that whole t that whole tower map has a couple of armor knights, has a fortress knight in there, stuff like that. He also gets a monster breaker at C+, which same thing as monster piercer with Dimitri. 
Yeah, same thing as Monster Pierces with Dimitri. It's going to help against that fight against Sylvain's older brother. And yeah, Dudu being able to take a couple of hits early on is just super helpful. He does get one two punch SC plus Brawl, which is a good. It does some good damage. It's a good follow up. Um, not the best. For, I think axes are going to be overall a little bit better. A better time investment. They also just get him a, a free path into Brigand for Death Blow, so he can deal more damage early on. Um, but he can. He, you could you could work with his Brawl as well. Um, I think doing both is fine. You can also easily take him into something like. Uh, you can you can let his armor rank get up so he can get weight minus three, um, but honestly I don't think it's worth it for his his speed's never going to be good enough where he's ever going to double. Um, he's usually going to be getting doubled by every unit in the game, so I think just really focus his defenses. He can make a really good fortress knight and gets really easy access in the fortress knight. Makes a great guard adjutant. Um, you can also make him a war master if you want to work his brawling. You could do grappler as well. Um, I personally just recommend doing Fortress Knight since he's he's such a bench warmer and after the first few chapters he definitely falls off. You don't really need to use him anymore, except for maybe an adjutant, which again I think Fortress Knight does really well. In case you ever need to pull him out for for a chapter you're having too much trouble with, maybe like a defend chapter where you need him to uh, hold a choke choke point, he can be he can do that very well. Fortress Knight definitely is a better choice for him just being a holding down a choke point. War, War Master Grappler does very well for that too. Felix is he comes with Wrath Strike, which is very effective, which is really, really, really good for him. But I think you should definitely focus his bows early on because you can get curve shot really quickly. Um, and that'll help him attack from a distance. As Felix does so good at dealing a lot of damage early on because of his ability. You don't really have access to battalions that early on, and there's other characters like Dimitri and like Byleth who could use the battalions more than him. So he has pretty much a free death blow with his ability. So he can do a lot of good damage and getting he has a proficient he's proficient in bows, so he easily gets curve shot. And then at C plus he gets heavy draw with at C plus with bows he gets heavy draw, which does a lot of damage for bows. Again, just he's not gonna quite have the same he doesn't have like dead eyes, so he's not hitting from super super far like Ash or Berendetta. Um, but he does just get access to two very nice bow combat arts. You don't need to necessarily make him an archer for the rest of the game. Uh, you, can, you can get him into archer so he gets hit plus 20. Um, you can also get him into brigand pretty easily so he gets death blow. But I think it's so worth your time to get him in, to get him curve shot, to get him his, uh, his bow ranking up since he can hit from a distance. Uh, not get counterattacked. He's not the bulkiest character. So while he is one of the only characters who might not get doubled early on, and is going to be one of your better dodge tanks early on. Um, just, he, you always want him to, do, to be doing damage. And curve shot just really helps him be able to do damage. It helps you dogpile units, stuff like that. Makes it really safe for him. Wrath Strike, he does have Wrath Strike at base. So you definitely want him to keep his sword around. I personally, in my playthrough, have just been training his gauntlets up. He doesn't have any gauntlet combat arts super early on. Um, but he, they do help him just deal some good damage on player phase but yeah bows are super super helpful for him and then end game he's got three fantastic choices he's probably the best physical unit in the game maybe besides byleth and the lords um, he, he, he very easily gets into grappler he can turn into war master as well he's rocks that class he's, he's amazing in it he's also a very super, very solid sniper if you want to keep him on bows the whole time give him hunter's volley he does a lot a lot of damage with that can hit from very far, can hit from afar and do safe damage. And then, of course, he, he can be a good swordmaster or assassin. It's not really quite worth his time just because sniper and something like grappler are going to really maximize his damage output more than something like swordmaster would. But he can definitely fit as that role if he needed to be. Ash, you also want to focus his bows. He comes with a curve shot. He gets dead eye pretty quickly. Ash is really look. It was really low when it comes to stat wise he gets overshadowed very quickly like very very quickly stat wise he's definitely one of your bench warmers but curve shot can really help you especially in the mock battle curve shot is so so helpful i think getting dead eye very quickly can help him attack from afar if you want to uh train his lancing up you can get shadow slash pretty quickly which will help him debuff enemies it gives him minus minus uh 
minus five to the defense. So that could be very useful for his kind of up close thing, but he's definitely, definitely just better to hit from a distance, do do some pretty solid chip damage with stuff like curb shot and dead eye, hit from very far away. He also has easy access to Archer really early on, so he can get hit plus 20. He also has a super easy access into Brigand, so he can get Death Blow. Two, the, probably the two best intermediate classes overall. And then Endgame. Well, I think you should most likely bench him. Um, he's not the best unit overall. You can keep him as a Sniper, give him Hunter's Volley. He does really well in that. You can make him a Bow Knight as well. And then he also acts... He can also be a pretty solid Wyvern Lord, just because it can patch up his strength and defense, almost like what I said with Petra. Um, he gets some pretty cool combat arts um, with la with axes and lances. You can also make him an, uh, a Wyvern Lord who uses bows. Uh, he can do pretty well at that. Do do some solid debuff, kind of be of a kind of be a debuff in and out supportive character. Not so much like a frontliner killer, but. He can, he can work out pretty well, but early game, Curve Shot, Dead Eye is super, super helpful. Next up is Sylvain. Now, Sylvain is super, super good early on. Uh, one, if you have FEMA Bioth, he comes for free on any route, so you can just get him early on. Um, he is one of the only characters in the game who comes with two combat arts that are different weapon types, Tempest Lance and Smash, which are both amazing combat arts. Meaning you can use, you could focus either Lance or Axe. I think it's really just get a head start on whatever you want to take him into at the end of the game. For example, I have my Sylvain with a Javelin for his range attack. He's got an Iron Lance, so I can use Tempest Lance if I ever need to. But really, I'm using a Training Axe, an Iron Axe, and I'm using Smash. And I just got Helm Splitter. Helm Splitter is what he gets for Axe. He gets Night Kneeler if he's... Using Lance Night Kneeler again, just like what I said to Dimitri, will help against Cavaliers, but I think Helm Splitter overall is going to be better. Um, help him fight his brother, and help him fight against those Armor Knights and stuff like that. He works pretty well with Axes. Lances are overall going to be a little bit easier to hit with, because um, he doesn't have the great greatest dexterity growth. But Axes, again, very, very easy to use too. Smash has a really good hit rate, so... He easily uses both of those. You can you can train him in both if you want him to. Um, he also gets mo he can also get monster piercer. Um, yeah, monster monster piercer stuff. So he can help again in that. I, th I believe he gets monster piercer for both of his, both lances and axes. He gets it for at least one. I think he gets both honestly. So that can help him against the chapter where he fights his older brother. He very quickly he very easily gets into brigand so he can get death blow. And then for Endgame, he just the exact same route as Ferdinand. He very, very easily gets into Paladin, which can give him Lance Fair for Swift Strikes, which he gets at A rank for Lances. He's also very, very solid as a Wyvern Lord. Sylvain's just super good unit. Doesn't matter if you're using him in Blue Lions or you're recruiting him. He is just gonna be super helpful early game. He's he turns out to be really bulky. He also has a good speed growth. He's just got amazing stats. And again, coming with two combat. He, Starts with two combat arts and Tempest Lance and Smash, and then very quickly learns uh, other ones like Night Kneeler and Helm Splitter and Monster Piercer. He's just he is he's so so useful early game, so so useful. Next up is Mercedes, who is the best healer in the game. I think undisputed the best healer in the game. She starts with heal and Nosferatu. You definitely want to just focus her magic, her bow. Her bow uh, prowess doesn't do much for her. She got terrible strength or growth. Focus her magic. She gets physic at C, which is physic is so good. She does get fortified later on too. Uh, but then you also want to get her to fire so she can do some decent chip damage pretty early on. But I think you definitely focus her faith magic. Get her reason magic up to at least D so she can use fire so she can do more chip damage. Uh, but she's just going to be your main healer. She's going to do a lot of healing. And she also heals herself because of her personal ability. So whenever she might take some damage, all you have to do instead of wasting a turn healing her or using a vulnerary, just let her heal somebody else with something like Physic, get her out of range, and she'll heal herself up. So it's really, really, really helpful. Get her into Mage, get her Fiendish Blow, let her do some more damage. And then for end game, she fits super well into either Grammarie or Bishop. Grammarie is going to be the more offensive class Bishop if you just want her to be um, super focused on healing, not Warp. I don't know why I had Warp there. That's a typo. Ignore that. Uh, 
yeah, for healing and with physic and fortified. Ignore that typo I have there. But she's super good as, as a Gremory or a Bishop. Annette is actually an MVP early game. She can be so helpful early game. You definitely want to focus on magic just like Mercedes, but instead you want to focus on reason magic just because she's going to have better attack power than she will healing power overall. Um, she starts with wind, she gets cutting gale at sea, um, but she does also get recover at sea faith, so you can definitely focus her sea faith if you don't plan to use her as much of attacking. Um, so recover can do a lot for you, it's going to heal a lot. You're not really going to be healing too, too much. Like heal and physic early game with low attack, with low magic stats aren't going to be doing the most amount of healing. So recover can definitely patch up that kind of hole there. She easily gets into ma to mage for death blow, or not death blow, fiendish blow. Um, she is a ra she has rally strength as a personal skill, so she's a rally bot early on, and she is the whole reason that I've gotten through mo multiple chapters, like the mock battle. I use her death, I use her rally strength on Byleth, on Dimitri, on Felix, even on Ash for his curve sh curve shot to do just so much damage. Really helps out early game. She can, she can help characters like Dimitri and help, help characters like Felix one round enemies early game of Madming, which is like unheard of. So super, super useful. Definitely use her personal skill. And then end game, she very easily gets into Warlock or Garemory for those times two magic uses. Um, she doesn't get any more faith magic besides Abraxas at A rank than faith. Um, but overall, she's gonna be doing more damage in her reason magic so you can focus that and you can also definitely get her into dark flyer i think dark flyer is her best option for her being a rally bot as she gets rally speed later on so she can have rally strength rally speed um she can get rally movement as well and then rally resistance too um get her, get her as a dark flyer let her use kanto uh get in and out she can be very very useful and still do some very solid chip damage then last up for the Blue Lion's house is going to be Ingrid. I overall think she's the one of the weaker units early on. Um, I honestly think that Ash and the Dew are better early on than she is. But she does come with Tempest Lance, which is really, really, really good. Um, Dimitri and Sylvain also do, which is the only reason why I think she's she's kind of lackluster early game. But same, pretty much the same route as Dimitri and Sylvain. She gets Tempest Lance. She easily gets Night Kneeler for stuff like Lunato. She also gets Hit and Run, which can be very useful. Because um, she back after she hits after she hits with hit and run she backs up one space so she can run and do some chip damage or kill somebody and then back up and let somebody else who can maybe take a hit better get in front of her soak up some damage or go after the opponent. She very easily gets into Pegasus Knight so she can get Darting Blow, uh, increase her attack speed when she so she can she can hopefully double early on. And to end game, she's definitely best fate for a Falcon Knight. Um, it's definitely worthwhile getting her into Brigand so she can get Death Blow, letting her go into Wyvern Lord for a bit, or Wyvern Rider. Um, you could make her go Wyvern Lord. I think Falcon Knight's better just for Lance Fair, but let her go Wyvern Rider just so her strength and defense can get patched up a little bit through the growths and the stat uh, and the class certification. Um, but she definitely fits into Falcon Knight. is super, super solid in a flying class. Um, she can also be a super great dancer choice uh, if you want her to be she gets phys she does get physic if you train her faith up and then she can really utilize sort of void she really won't be doing a lot but she can be up on the front lines um being a dancer you don't have to be super super worried about her because she's going to have really good speed and avoidance get her sword prowess up so she's got as much avoid as possible give her let her use physics to heal and be a little bit more supportive as well so she can be a very solid dancer choice but definitely definitely one of put her into falcon knight and that's going to do it for the blue lions um the next video will be the golden deer and then after that i'm going to do dash and wolves let me know what you guys think in the comments below i really hope this helps you out in maddening i know it's not the most detailed thorough guide but it's something else it's just something that's going to help you get through early game because early game is the real grind of maddening for three houses like the first five chapters are such a grind and you don't get a lot of freedom with it so i'm just i hope this is helping you guys just get past that early game uh helps you kind of get a game plan for those first five chapters and then after that you can kind of go off and do whatever you, you can kind of experiment more and do whatever you want with the classes wise 
Um, but I hope this guide kind of helps you not only get an idea of what you should do for the early game, but also gives you a good solid path for what you should do for end game. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video where we cover the Golden Deer.